Greg Farrell is the president and CEO of Farrell Wealth and is a registered representative with and securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA SIPC insurance products offered through LPL Financial or its licensed affiliates. The opinions of Greg and his guests are merely opinions. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, and financial advisor or tax advisor prior to investing. All right, welcome everybody. We're excited to be able to have the Lashiac Accountancy Group here on Money Matters with Greg. The show's Money Matters with Greg. I'm Greg Farrell, CEO and president of Farrell Wealth. It's a wealth management firm that manages money here locally in Valparaiso, Indiana, and then all over the nation. We're in a number of states uh, throughout the nation. And we just want to be able to talk about what's going on out there in the world of COVID and trying to help others. And basically, that's what we do on this show, is really try to help you save some money, um, ultimately keep some money. And then with everything that's going on with the PPP and um, you know everything else as far as the CARES Act, really just sort of get an idea. And obviously, where we go for accounting and where you should, too, is the Lashiac Accountancy Group. You can find them out. Uh, on the web, and we have Joe, we have Brian, uh, and we have Jeff Lachiak. We also have Michelle Gonzalez. All of them are qualified CPAs, certified CPAs, and do a great job with all of their clients. And I just wanted to be able to bring them on today and just sort of have a conversation of what they're seeing and and, um, and sort of the things that they're seeing out there. So we'll start with you, Joe. What are you seeing out there in regards to uh, helping your clients in regards to the PPP and everything else that you've been, you guys have been trying to do as far as managing and navigating these waters that have just been so crazy lately? I think I'm seeing a lot of panic, Greg. A lot of, a lot of our clients who are very, very comfortable in the way their businesses were operating, all of a sudden hit a stop sign. They hit a brick wall and no one really understands what's going on politically the way you run your business may be affected and people are wanting to ask questions and sometimes you don't have the right answer for them what was the you mentioned something earlier when we were before we were talking you're talking about the ce classes and what you guys were going through as far as training goes what what did that all entail well, it, it became trying, trying to get as comfortable as we could with what the SBA was doing and what Congress intended with the new law. Unfortunately, every two days, the rules changed. And even the computation of the allowable forgiving of a loan or what entails the right application process. And then now we're getting concerned about with record keeping to make sure that we do have the data that will be supplied to the banks in eight weeks so that the loan is in fact forgivable. Of all the people that you, uh, you helped go through this application and, and you know, the whole process that was, and I know it was fast and furious for your guys, I'm sure, uh, what percentage actually got loans? I'm going to estimate about 50%. 50, five zero? Five zero. Okay. Um, anything you attribute to why that's not necessarily higher or lower? Or? I think Congress wanted banks to react quicker than they absolutely physically could at, react to the situation. And the, a lot of the banks weren't really concerned about helping their customers receive these loans in that the, re, the interest rate on the loan is only 1%. And the way the things get computed, most of those loans were small. So to process a loan application on a $50,000 or $80,000 loan at 1% was really not in the cup of tea of a lot of banks. So if they're larger banks, you think they just sort of backed away from those sorts of things? They just didn't do it? Well, I think they had a limited amount of resources in order to fulfill. So that I think they picked the, the custom, their customers that were in their best interest because they're customers that they dealt with every day. A lot of customers or people we had at banks don't borrow on a weekly or a monthly or an, an, either an annual basis. Some of them had their debt paid off in their businesses. They didn't even have a banker that they could talk to. 
Right. And that is something we're hearing out there too. I want to ask Michelle, are you seeing some, so what are you seeing out there in regards to, um, you know, uh, what this looks like and how this looks like as far as, you know, the, maybe the stress to your clients that you're working with. And then also what advice could you give a business owner in regards to the taxes and everything else? Obviously everything gets pushed off to July 15th and as far as filing personally and everything else, but um, any advice you'd like to be able to give those business owners out there that are listening? Um, I would just say, I would agree with Joe that we are seeing a lot of confusion. Um, right now, the confusion is more on what's going to be required. Do I have to have the same people employed? Do I have to um, pay someone who's not working so the loan isn't forgiven? So there's a lot of questions now about the back end. Um, even the clients that were able to get their money on the front end, now we have a lot of questions on the back. Um, I think one of the most interesting things that I've seen so far is that while some of our clients are not working and are kind of panicking, we have other clients who are busier than they have ever been. Um, and so it's a very interesting mix as to which ones are actually doing really well and which ones are struggling and it's not always the way you would expect it to be. Um, as far as advice I would give, I would just say, um, Let's take a breath. Um, we do have until July, until September and October to get those tax returns filed. Um, we are, you know, working with our clients as the information comes out, we will help them um, get their records together on the back end. Um, the worst case scenario is you repay the loan. It's 1%. Um, so it's not, um, you know, as tragic as it might feel. Um, and then the other piece of advice I would say going forward as we come out of this pandemic is just the importance of good record keeping, kind of following the rules all along, because some of our clients who were not able to get the PPP loans are the ones that didn't pay themselves payroll over time like they should have or have their records done from 2019. And so they kind of got shut out here. Um, with this plan because they didn't have those things in place. So hopefully going forward, um, they'll be a little bit more attentive to some of those things. Perfect, it's really, really great information. Guys, uh, we got Jeff and Brian Leshek here as well. I'm gonna ask you to pose the same sort of question to you guys. What are you seeing out there? And then also what would you recommend in the current climate, how you would uh, help some people, uh, give, give them some good advice? Pick. Uh, rock, I'll go first. Rock, paper, I'll, I'll go first. goes first, yeah. I'll go first. I, I think some of my clients, more than anybody else, are restaurant clients. And in Indiana, as you know, um, they have the, you know, the stay-at-home order. So there's not, in, you know, can't, obviously, like most places in the U.S. Ooh. can't go to the restaurant to eat uh, and that kind of thing. So they're, you know, applying for these PPP loans and getting approved for them. But then they don't know when this stay-at-home order is going to be lifted. So it's kind of like they want to hire their employees back, but they're, it's kind of uncertain in terms of is the stay-at-home order, you know, Indiana is extended to May 1st. Is it going to go to May 15th, June 30th? By that time, you know, the, the eight-week period is halfway over. And to have these people sitting here, you know, sitting there to pay to do nothing, from the perspective of especially from their business if they can't if they don't have the volume of people coming in that they normally would on a day-to-day -day basis um it's kind of gut-wrenching for them to know what exactly to do and they're trying to um obviously with takeout and, and you know delivery there's there are certain options there but other businesses that we have that are in the entertainment like um more of like the family fun centers or the bowling alleys or that kind of stuff or uh, golf courses putt putt golf that kind of thing they're kind of at a standstill because I'm not sure what's going to happen when things are going to get lifted, you know, when volume is going to pick back up. I mean, golfing is allowed in Indiana, but it's still the volume of, is it there? Is it not there? You know, that this would be a you know, busy time of year for some of those places and it's not as busy as it has been. So it's kind of questions there. So I think again, from what Michelle said, getting your records in order. Um, I think, you know, same with the credit crunch that happened in 07, 08, it's kind of, Think the importance of having your kind of records up to date and knowing your business. Um, and we even said, you know, from Joe was saying from some of the bigger banks, it was harder to get loans. We've been even talking with people about having a multiple banking relationship, maybe with a big bank and a small local bank, so that in circumstances like this going forward, if, you know, um, 
there is an opportunity for some, you know, some something similar to this in the future. If God forbid something else like this would happen, that you have other um, means and other uh, avenues with which to uh, investigate the process with. Excellent, excellent. Um, that was Brian Leshek. Let's hear from Jeff Leshek and see what he thinks uh, is out there in regards to, uh, you know, as far as the climate, but also any advice you'd like to be able to let everybody know about. I think one of the one of the important things I think we've touched on is I think it's kind of provided a, um, I guess, a non-voluntary reset to most businesses, right? Um, you know, with businesses either being shut down or slowing down, I think it's a good time for business owners to look at what's going on um, with their business, even before the shutdown when everybody was doing well, what was working well, what was, what was you know, contributing to that growth. It's not just the economy. Obviously, they were successful because they were operating probably um, – more efficiently meeting targets for what their customers wanted, but there's always some things that businesses need to do to improve. So I think business owners during this time where things are slowing down, it's an opportunity to look at those things that maybe they thought they could improve on and maybe just didn't have the time to improve on those things. And maybe they could have used, you know, the past four weeks and however long it goes that, you know, we're going to stay at home to, to, to try to initiate a plan so that when things start, they can hit the ground running. Um, and I think it's an important aspect to learn from what happened 10 years ago is um, we stress to our clients that it's not necessarily um, a bad thing to, you know, have a budget in place. There's a lot of businesses that don't have a budget, um, don't know, really know what drives the costs of their business. Take a look at those things and, and, and really look at when things start ramping up, what's, way, what's ways that we can operate more efficiently. Um, how can we, you know, not only drive the top line, but also drive the bottom line of our business to achieve growth by cutting costs that are unnecessary or finding ways to deliver our service more efficiently or produce our product um, more effectively. Um, I think there's multiple things that people can utilize. And I think this, this probably past four weeks have, have really stressed the importance of having a group of professionals you can work with and that are looking out for you. You know, if, if your financial advisor or your CPA or your banker hasn't reached out to you to see what they can do to help you, there's other options out there that you can go and ask um, for that advice for some people. You know, there's, there's a lot of options I think that people have. I think there's, um, I think this is proving more and more that business is a lot of personal relationships, who you can count on, who, uh, who's there to provide advice or to listen to you when you have things just to get off your chest and you need to surround yourself with a group of advisors that are there for you to do that. Um, that, are not, that are not necessarily yes people, but people that will um, look at your business objectively and provide guidance where they think they can benefit. Um, you know, we always talk about doing things the right way, but I think doing things the right way and, and knowing exactly how your business runs and what the numbers mean and not making accounting a necessary evil at the end of the year just to file a tax return, but you know, understanding your numbers at quarter end, understanding your numbers at month end, so that you're not surprised when instances like this come up, that you know how to adapt and you know how to adjust. I think we saw in 2008 and nine the first reaction from a lot of people was, how do we cut? How do we cut costs? And that was we cut our people, right? And so that was what we, what a lot of businesses felt was the main driver of you know, their cost structure, their businesses, if we can cut our people, then we can survive. I don't know if that's necessarily the right answer. Um, I think we'll see in this, hopefully, we'll see from this pandemic that when things start going, if we maintained an optimal operating structure and have our um, employees that we've trained along the way, if we have them all in place and we've taken the necessary measures to sustain them and, and keep those relationships, hopefully, the, the demand from the public will be there for our services. And we have a little blip on our screen for a month or two, but it'll take time to recover those two months. But if, we, if we've done things now in place when we're slowed down to be able to hit the ground running and operate more efficiently, I think in the end, um, I think we'll learn some valuable lessons out of this whole situation. It's great advice. The show's Money Matters with Greg. I'm Greg Farrell, CEO and president of Farrell Wealth. It's a wealth management firm, a registered financial advisor. And the show is about money and your money. And that's why we're having Lashiac Accountancy Group here. You can find them at lashiac.com. Talking to Jeff, talking to Brian, talking to Joe, talking to Michelle, 
everyone so much then thank you for this great great advice for everyone that's going through this you know historic time that we have right now um is there anything else anybody would like to be able to leave the audience with as far as just a thought i'm noticing a pattern here in your comments that you know keep track of your documents make sure you get your stuff in on time make sure you have a timeline make sure you have a budget all these things that you guys preach all the time it's really kind of coming to roost right now, isn't it? For I sure, say, I think, go, go ahead, Michelle, go ahead. <laughs> I would say that it comes back to relationship. Um, the clients that we saw have the greatest success with getting the loans and um, being able to move forward are the ones that had good relationships with their bankers, with us, with their um, even their attorneys. Um, I talked to one of my um, favorite bankers who will show remain un unnamed, but he called lots of times during those two weeks because he was calling about other clients because their CPA wasn't answering the phone because it was, you know, tax crunch time. And so it's really important, I think, to develop those relationships when you don't necessarily need something so that when you do, um, you have those in place. Great advice. Anybody else? And just to build off of that, I think, you know, you have a tendency to, you know, worry about, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do it the next week. I'll do it a week after. I know I got to do it. I think this is the, this is the impetus, hopefully, for many people to say, kind of quit that mentality and kind of say, it's important now. Let's do it now. Let's get it handled. Let's handle it first thing. It's important. It needs to be done. Fantastic. Hey, everybody, really want to thank you all for being on today and uh, certainly look forward to many more conversations here when we're actually able to break out of this thing and actually uh, see each other for, for real. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you so much. Your advice is really, really, really valuable to a lot of people out there. So thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me. Greg Farrell is the president, CEO of Farrell Wealth and is a registered representative with and securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA SIPC insurance products offered through LPL Financial or its licensed affiliates. The opinions of Greg and his guests are merely opinions. All individuals should get their proper advice investing and managing their personal finances. Money. Get back.